Hello, this is Rhonda Kitchens. Currently, I am um, one of your co-students. I'm also going through the education program. I'm going to go over some things um, that you may see that you need while going through the education program. I'm going to do a little bit of an overview of what I'm talking about, and then I'll do a demo, and then I may wrap up with uh, how you can clean up some references. I think that might be a complete little package. This is absolutely not everything. So I hope um, you'll understand one of the big things that the library is, is people like myself. I'll be glad to help you. If you have a question, send it to me. I'll work on it with you in person. I'll talk to you on the phone. We can do a little Zoom. We can do a Google Hangout, whatever it takes. I'll even do one of these videos and send it to you and ask you if it helps. You could like send me back something like, not so much or could you say this slower or go over this and you know what I will I love to do that and I love to talk to you about the things that you're working on we're also a portal that means uh, the place I'm going to show you today where we pretty much house essentially the links to our databases and uh, what are databases databases are sort of like if you want to think Hulu and Netflix they contain these digital objects uh, there they have sort of an overlap but you both search them different ways they have different things one might do this better than the other and that's essentially how databases work they're collections of ebooks they're collections of scholarly journals some are collections of reports some are collections of videos they all do a little bit of a different thing and they have different types of um, search points but they're, they're kind of uh, a lot alike well, and um, how you pick one or the other often has to do with, number one, how you're being graded. What does the rubric say? Does your rubric or your direction say, I need a scholarly article. You need to find a quantitative research piece on. This needs to be an empirical article saying, showing. Try to figure out what it is it's trying to say. Sometimes you can get away with a, an explanation of something. That might be a book. If you're trying to figure out how to describe how to do something, we have videos. If you're trying to find a scholarly or longitudinal study of a topic over 12 years, that's going to be a specific database and a way to do a search. So it's all very exciting, so I hope to explain that to you in this process. We're also a place. I'm actually in the basement of the Tampa Library. Sometimes I'm asked to go out and do instruction, which I'm glad to do, but I am available to you in person. I will be glad to sit next to you, uh, read your assignment with you, and talk to you about it. Whatever you need, I'll be glad to do it. But also, keep in mind, we do have a uh, tutor that can help you with the writing. I'm really great with uh, research and APA and some of the in-text citation. When it comes to writing and working with transitions or writing style, um, sometimes Stephen Carnival is the better person. And he's on the second floor at the end place. You can also reach him at 813-463-7128. Now, another thing I want to talk about is research, is brainstorming. Sometimes it it's the words or how we use the words. There's something called truncation. I'm going to show you how to do phrase searching as well and also how to harvest and look for other things, uh, other terms and ways of looking at things. Sometimes your uh, piece may ask you to do outcomes. Certainly you could search outcomes, but sometimes in terms of outcomes, we want to see something. Um, did someone repeat, repeat a behavior or learn a behavior? So we may be looking for other words that denote outcomes. We may look for the word program because sometimes these are programs or studies that people are put through. So when it comes to your question and thing you're trying to answer, sometimes there's a lot of a word game. And this is a word game I, as your librarian, will be glad to play with you. But also through this uh, little search I'm going to do, hopefully I can show you how to build your skills in that area because researching is really quite awesome and um, if you just go through you read your assignment you look at that rubric and make sure you meet all those requirements it'll help you get your full grade if it wants you to use five articles from the library I want to show you how you're going to find those five articles okay if it wants you to find a quantitative or qualitative study I'm going to show you how to identify those as well it's not as difficult as it may first seem. Um, in fact, it's a lot like using Google, which you may have mistakenly already done, not realizing that those aren't scholarly articles. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that. 
I'm not going to go a great deal into documentation or APA, but no, I'm here to help you. I have a great handout that I hope that you've picked up or have sent to you. I call it the uh, Ugly APA Cheat Sheet. If I have time on this, I'm going to go over a page at the end. It is not a complete APA overview, but it'll just kind of give you a way or a different way or perspective of looking at it. Now this is what the library page looks like and while we're uh, talking today I'm going to tell you some things that you may not suspect. First of all, do not use the library search. Uh, it's of no use to you at this point in time. Completely avoid it unless you're trying to do a general search. When you're looking and you're working from an assignment or rubric you need to pinpoint your search better. You're going to sometimes need to find a journal by title and find an article in that. I'm going to show you how to do that or you could need to find a scholarly article or research to support an idea. If you're up here, you're going to get books, ebooks, and a whole mix of things. I find if you go after the type of resource or format you need, it's going to be a lot cleaner and you're going to make sure when you're a professor, read your references that you're all on point. Um, today, I'm not going to go through all of these, but uh, this is a great screenshot. You know, I might go through most. Um, education research, these are the prime places. Now, if you're looking for ebooks or books, what you're looking for is overviews, references, discussions, details, essays, and more. Suppose you need a description of postmodern theory, or if you need to know how something might have happened over the time, or a history of a topic, things like that then you're most likely looking for a book. Suppose your textbook has something like it, but you need more detail. You're probably looking for an ebook. Now, if your professor has asked you to find a scholarly article, an ebook is not that thing, but it is a library resource, they are reputable, and they can be used as you're um, discover, um, discovering and discussing different topics. But if your professor said, bring me a scholarly article, and I want you to uh, analyze or break it down or review it in some particular way, don't take an ebook. Go instead to these three databases. Um, Academic Search Complete, that covers everything from astrology to zoology. Education Source, one of my personal favorites. Um, I use it as part of the program uh, pretty primarily. And also the Education Database ProQuest, I'll admit to you up front, um, when we're looking at EBSCO and ProQuest, that's kind of that thing I was talking about with Hulu and Netflix and how you search and how you find things and what one thing has or another. Both of these databases are full of scholarly journals, full of them. Um, they may overlap, they may not. One has a better search than the other. It's part of my opinion. I like the EBSCO one. And uh, I like to use Google Scholar in the end, which will find me ProQuest articles. You're like, what are you talking about, Rhonda? I hope to show you all of those things. But if you're looking for a scholarly article, peer-reviewed, quantitative, case study, empirical, I think I've named them all, an academic study, maybe that may appear as well. If your assignment says any of those things, these are the three databases that you, as a student in the College of Education, will go for immediately. That said, there's other things. When we're working in education, sometimes we have sort of like an industry take, um, essays, some ideas about different things that aren't peer-reviewed, they aren't run through different people who are viewing them, they don't have a methodology and all these other pieces. It's just an essay or a piece or sometimes it's a how-to, like how to put together this particular program. These are extremely useful in education and they have great value. There will be some of those in here and in these other databases, but there'll be a great deal of them in these two. These aren't primarily uh, scholarly. In fact, the Chronicle of Higher Education is not a scholarly article. It is a great uh, magazine that's academic on education, higher education, but it's not a scholarly journal. Um, Eric has a little bit of everything. Sometimes it has PowerPoints, it has reports, it has pages, reviews. I think it even has posters and it has dissertations. It has everything mixed together. So rather than put this up there, I put it down here. I think it makes it a lot more clear about what it may do for you. Some of these reports are like 53 pages or longer. So in a way, Eric could almost an ebook. So if you have a topic and you're trying to understand it more, Eric might be a great place for you. If you're looking for a scholarly article or a quantitative research on a particular thing, Eric may not be.
use these guys instead. Again, look at your assignment, look at your rubric, and match library resources up with what you need. Um, we also have videos that may be helpful for some of you that are looking for classroom techniques, lectures, and other things that may be useful for you. Again, it's not a scholarly article, and it's not peer-reviewed, and it's not empirical. Is it helpful? Absolutely. Just make sure that you're not using that in the place of these powerhouses. Now, Google Scholar functions when we set it up as an overarching thing. Like if you really love Google, you may really love Google Scholar. Um, I use it as a librarian because of the way it connects information and how academics borrow, use, quote, and advance from idea to idea. It's really beautiful. You could do something called citation searching. Essentially, if you find one article, you can find more. Also, if you see an article mentioned in one of these that's in the references or some other place, you can take the title, go to Google Scholar, and see if you can find it full text at the library. Okay? So, if you're looking for a scholarly article, this section and this section once you set it up. I'll show you how to do that. It takes under three minutes. If you're looking for a mixed bag of information, these are good. And if you're looking for ebooks to kind of give you different perspectives, but more detailed, but not in the scholarly format, that is with a introduction, an abstract, a methodology, the research, it's totally transparent. So if you took that piece, you could do it yourself. That is going to be the hallmark of a scholarly article. That is not an ebook. The ebook does something different and it does what it does well. So I hope that helps. Now I'm going to go to, sorry, I missed, uh, how you contact me. So I'm going to go away from that. Um, right now I'm going to prep my area over here. What I'm going to do, and this is very important um, that you go into my campus, argosy.edu. I'm over on the other screen signing in. I'm not going to bounce you around yet. And I'm putting in my sign in. And I want to show you where the library is. Sometimes uh, that's not really clear. I hope in some work that I do with the library, I start making these things more clear. Like when you see library, there's a link to the library and simple things like that. Um, if you ever want to give me some suggestions on that, I am open to them. So you see, I am here. This is my class I'm currently taking, and uh, to get to the library, you can go to My Academics and click on this. You can also go down here, Library Resources. This is the fastest way, or you could go through your class. This is the longest way. It looks a little awkward, so once you see it, it doesn't look like the other ways. Academic Resources. Oh, it went straight through. Uh, no, it didn't. Here we go. And it says Launch Library. Now, as you can see, this is the part I had on the slide. I'm not a fan of working with this particular search. It doesn't cover everything. It's not really clear what the items are. You can't do the type of targeted search I really love to do. So I avoid this. Um, but while I'm here, let me show you some things that are important. Over here under Quick Reference or here on the calendar, the library is always putting together um, these different events. Let's see if it brings up a whole bunch. So uh, this happens to be how to organize or write an assignment, but you can go here and library webinars and sign up for them. Go ahead and sign up even if you can't attend live. They have things on the APA, how to do some research, how do you put together a dissertation, all sorts of things you'll find very, very helpful. If you can't attend, they at least send you the video and the handouts that went, to what went along with it. Now, one of the first things that came up in my education course, which as a librarian, I was surprised because it's not always how we teach how to use the library, was to find an article in a journal. I can admit right here, there is nothing on this page that's very helpful in that regard, except for this. This is called Journal Finder. You may think it's going to find you articles, and it doesn't specifically do that, but suppose your... Um, assignment was to use a journal of higher education to find an article on the topic. So we're going to do the journal of higher education. Click on this, six search, and what this does is find out if we have it available in full text. Now if you decide to go to Google despite everything I say, 
and use a Google search and you find the perfect article, you click on it and it wants money, you've hit the paywall. What you do instead is take the title of that journal, bring it here, and see if we have it available to you for free. Um, from here, uh, this is usually quite common. Sometimes you will not be able to use the current year. Uh, we can uh, request it for you and try to get it in, but it's going to take two weeks or less if we're able to find it. But this lets me know that Academic Search Complete has it, Education Source has it, and those are already two uh, databases that I like for education. So I'm going to choose education source because that's going to put me in some place I want to be anyway and it's going to look like this it's going to give you the years uh, your professor may or may not want you to use the past five or three years um, sometimes they just want you to find a topic and a scholarly article in a journal so here you have an opportunity to search within this publication and it sets up the search for you suppose we're looking for something on postmodern theory do you see how this has different um, endings? This is a really great thing when you're doing research. Let me bring it back. It's actually very visual. Put an asterisk there. That gets all the suffixes to that particular thing. We could even do that with theory. Let's go theory. We spell it right. Sorry, guys. And I put this. That gets theory, theories, theoretical. A whole bunch of things. This really opens up your search and gets you to a lot of great places. I hope I did not test this search, but usually it does. So we have four items. And it may be that the Journal of Higher Education is not a great place for this topic, but let's give it a look. If this is what you need to write about and you need to use this journal, you only need one, so four looks really good. So this has articles. It lets you know that it is in this journal. It tells you how many pages it is. 39 pages. This one has 16 pages. They look like they probably will be scholarly. This has cited references of 106. That means these probably will be linked and also useful for you if you're doing a dissertation as opposed to a, di a discussion post. If this is something you're working on, go ahead and start taking these uh, subject headings. Um, history of education, medieval education. Um, find the things that may be useful for you. Uh, this talks about uh, social sciences, philosophy, study and teaching, and modernism, things of that nature. This one talks about it in terms of philosophy. It names a philosopher, well, philosophers. This may be an indication that you want to include these as well. This looks like a very fascinating philosophical takes. So when you see this, this means if you're doing a discussion post, you're not going to get it probably today. You'll probably get it in two weeks. If you're doing a dissertation or you're working ahead, click on this. What it'll do is take you to Iliad. If you've never used Iliad, it will actually take information into this form. You will build your own account and you should hear from a librarian within a week or two weeks. Again, if this is something, um, but in this case, it was able to find the article inside of ProQuest. Remember when I said they're sort of like Netflix and Hulu? They do have, uh, sometimes they'll refer to each other but not have the full text or the whole series or something like that. Some of the databases work the same way. So in this case, we are able to use this for a discussion post. It's ready. We can work with it now. We don't have to wait for it. Okay, does that make sense to you guys? I hope so. So if your professor asks you to read a particular journal, you will go here to Journal Finder, you will type in that journal title, and go to the database that has it in full text for the largest ranges of years. Okay, the next thing you may be asked to do is gather up three to four different articles on a theory or a topic. Why don't you go ahead and go into the database list in this case. Let's assume that what they want you to do is uh, get some different articles, maybe it'll say ebooks, maybe it'll say scholarly. Now, if it offers ebooks, let's use ebooks. If it offers, you can also use different articles, use the full range. But I want you to stick to these three if it says scholarly, peer reviewed, empirical, or other terms that are like that. See the subject listing? It has education. 
That's right, we've pre-selected the best ones for you. Now, inside of that, I'm going to select for you the best ones for scholarly articles. Academic Search Complete, Education Database, and Education Source. These are the three top ones I would like you to put in your repertoire. I personally go to Education Source first and sometimes work my way back. Sometimes I work myself out to Google Scholar, which I will show you today. The other thing you could do is go to ebooks. I'm going to show you this before I go into those articles. Ebooks, um, they're um, going to be awesome in different ways. You, you, can, you don't need any special reader for them. I'm going to put in postmodern. I'm going to put in education. You'll be able to read them on any device you have. What you see is what you get. Art education, maybe not that one. Mathematics, new, educating a postmodern child, not quite. Oh, the challenge to theory and practice of educational administration. This seems like it may be good. It's from 2003. So let's click on the title. Now, if you click download, you're going to have to come up here and sign in and go through that process. It takes under five minutes, but it requires you to sign in. There's no special library sign in is what you create with the vendor. This is true for EBSCO ebooks and also ProQuest. But if you're just doing a discussion post, you're moving fast, you just want to get to the part that you need to get to, go ahead and use the PDF. You'll be able to see it on your phone. Click on search within and let's put in the term postmodern. And all the places that occurs comes up here. And it kind of gives you a little bit of text and context to find the thing that is closest. It will take you to that section and it will highlight them. And you can move your screen over. I'm just not. So, wow, it's really fast. Sorry about that. But you'll see all the places that it occurs. Now then, you're like, I am not unsure about ebooks. I do not know how to cite them. This is not a. Uh, foolproof method. It will totally help you though. It has a site here. Remember the rule here is to always um, copy and correct. We're looking for APA and we have this. Now this is, and I'm just going to give you a warning here, this is a citation for a print work. It has it's the uh, city and the publisher and ends with a period. Your citation for this will end here and then we'll end with retrieved from ebscohost.com http colon slash slash ebscohost.com all of this replace the physical print world information with retrieved from ebscohost.com um, if you go to APA blog and look up ebooks you'll see how that looks or if you just pick up your sixth edition APA and look for ebooks you will see what I mean so this is close but this is not correct so also in the title absolutely nothing and APA is capitalized in the title it's so for the first word, a word that follows a colon and a proper noun or noun phrase. In this case, the only item that should be capitalized is the. So if you make those uh, small changes, that will be a good um, thing to use for your references. I go ahead and copy it and I go back later and change it. I do have a checklist on doing that that's pretty complete. And after going through it a couple of times, you'll understand it pretty well. So. I hope uh, you understand how to find a book. I hope you at this point know how to find a journal title and then look for an article. And now I'm going to go into our list. And again, I'm just at subjects. I have education. I'm going to go to education source and I'm going to talk briefly about finding a research article. Suppose our topic is on leadership styles. I will put that in. I always kind of start broad and then go smaller. I will go through the list. I have 6,000 things to choose from. Here I can select for full text. I will also select for references available. And I'll look for also scholarly and peer review. Um, the best that this database can do is select an academic journal. It cannot always choose an academic article. An academic journal can have a book review, letters to the editor, sort of an overview essay of what the uh, particular volume's about, um, something about my first day on work, or other types of things. 
what you need to do if you're asked to find that scholarly article is to make sure that it has the parts of a scholarly article. Generally speaking, it's over five pages and it has multiple authors. So many times you can see from here that's highly likely. We also see that it has 22 cited references. If we go into this, we're going to see the PDF. We're going to go right into here and go ahead and look at the article itself. It has 13 pages. It begins with authors. We see the authors have asterisk about by their names. Usually what this means, this tells us who they are. So this begins the path of transparency of a scholarly article. We see who wrote it. We see who they're attached to. Sometimes you'll also see an ethical statement in, in there as well. You have contact information with a person. You have an abstract and you have author provided keywords. Now these author provided keywords are also very important because it may be that the journal itself did not select these, but these are where the author believes they should be. And sometimes I use new terms that the journal does not use. We'll have an introduction. In the introduction, if it talks about something, it will tell you uh, who said it, who read it, who put it together. And also, uh, as you go down, it will give you more information. If it states something, it provides an attribution. It does not just make wild statements out of the blue except perhaps when we get to the conclusions. But in theory, that has developed from all the information that happened here. You're going to see the objectives of the study, the research methodology, who they added, who they didn't add, the data analysis, all sorts of information, all of these things that you could replicate if you had time, money, and funding. Now, and it also has references. So if you saw something up there you want to read, you can come down here and find an article on it. And uh, I'm going to go into something and show you how to find these articles if we have them in full text. I'm just going to copy a title. So, as you can see, that is helpful. And I'm going to go over here and you will have cite. Again, the rule is to copy and correct it. This has the author's last name, first initials. They're connected with an and, ampersand, rather than an APA loves an ampersand in references. It has the uh, date. It has the title. Nothing in this title should be capitalized except for the P in principle and also the A that follows the colon. That needs to be corrected. The Bulletin of Education and Research is actually in something called title case. The of will not be, the O and of should not be capitalized. The bulletin, the title of the journal, and the volume number will be italicized. It will follow in parentheses with an issue number, comma, 45, first, the beginning to the ending page ends with a period. And it should have a DOI number, or it will be retrieved from, and you would find the URL of this particular piece. You could look into the APA style blog or your 6th edition manual to uh, look up that information, see how it should appear. But you can copy, but make sure to correct this because it's useful, but it's not correct at this time. So I hope you could see how useful that might be. Uh, this is actually in an article, um, excuse me, in a database, uh, education source. But you can also do this. Suppose you're working on a topic that has some overlap with some different things. You can also go ahead and add in the database Academic Search Complete. This is going to add in some social sciences and um, anything from astronomy to zoology that may have something to do with your topic. In this case, Leadership Styles uh, does cover many ranges of areas, cross-disciplinary across. So you can also go down here and select psychology articles. You can also um, find, put in Eric as well. Just remember, Eric does have some scholarly articles, not as many as Education Source, but it has lots of reports, dissertations, and other pieces of information that are not scholarly. So make sure you always really look at it and go through the major parts of the scholarly article but when you put these all together what it'll do is add them to your search and wherein we had 6,000 things now we have over 10,000 and we can put in education leadership or something like that and we'll have some different types of articles to look at here. Now, you may be asking, um, what if they want a quantitative article? 
other than being able to divide, uh, just define it by looking at it, you can also use those terms as research. So this will bring up the things that are quantitative. You can put in a meta-analysis. Meta you can put in systematic reviews. Uh, the systematic review is the top of the research pyramid. Um, sometimes when you could lit a, a literature review, what you look at is things that everybody read to reach um, certain conclusions or work on a topic. The systematic review is a combination of research itself, just not the topic, but research done on the topic in order to solve it in order to come up to a best practices. So if you look at a systematic review, on a topic, you may find a wealth, a dozen or more research studies on your topic, and you'll also see them analyzed and looked at in different ways and compared to other studies. So systematic reviews are really the top of the research evidence-based pyramid. That's right, if you hear evidence-based, make sure you head for Academic Search Complete, Education Source. Those are your top ones to find those items. So, I'm here at 30 minutes, which is, I know, quite something. So let me go and show you the last thing that I think may be very helpful for you. It's called Google Scholar. And you might have heard about it or used it and have found it not to be very useful. Um, the reason for that is you didn't have it set up right. And now you can. Make sure you have uh, an instance of being signed in to the library in the background. That's very important. Come here to Settings. Go to Library Links, type in Argosy. You're going to select these three items. Go to Save. Now, what this does, Google Scholar, you know how there was all those lists of different uh, databases, over 100. This searches the scholarly articles in those databases all at once. Most of them, not all of them, but quite a good ones. So here I took something I found in someone else's references, and I'm going to look for that article. And I found it. It is not available to us in full text. If so, it would have been here. In this case, I would try to uh, order it. If you're trying to use this for discussion posts, maybe not. Dissertation, excellent. Put a request in for it because it's not going to come to you extremely quickly. But you can still do some work with it. In fact, it may be too old, 2001. But really, there's no such a thing as an article that's too old. This is an article that has been cited because this is what Google Scholar lets you do. It's been cited 41 times. And this gives you the articles that actually went through it. Now, you can find these, all of these, will be available to you in full text. You'll just click on them and go look at the full text. If you click here, you'll go to a paywall. If you go through Google, you'll hit the paywall. You come to Google Scholar, you set it up with Argosy, and you make sure you're signed in in the background. This is what you'll see. So, this is really quite awesome. Additionally, you can change the date range to only look at more current items. You can also create an alert. Suppose you come here and your thing that you're working on is educational psychology and something. Go here to create an alert and it will email you the articles on your topic. You can get quite micro on it and keep adding words and terms and narrow down your topic and when something is published on that topic it will email an alert to you. Then you just need to be signed into your Google Scholar and see if you can find it full text or if you have to ask for it on inter interlibrary loan. So at 33 minutes, I know that you're getting um, a little tired. I hope you follow me through. Uh, I wanted to get a lot of things to you all at one time, and I moved you back over here because uh, this is my contact. I'm available to you. I take appointments. I do videos. I could do shorter videos. You can say, Rhonda, send me a three-minute video on this, that, or the other thing, and I will do so. You can call me. You can write me. You can um, see me on Zoom, whatever it takes. I'm your librarian. I'm here to help you. I'm excited to work on your topics. I'll be glad to uh, discuss and break down an assignment or rubric with you to help show you how it attaches to different types of information format. I didn't really go over APA a great deal today because it is uh, big, but if you want to come to my office or if you want to send me a reference page, I will be glad to go through each and every piece with you and talk to you about it. Um, because your success is my success. So I apologize. We're at 35 minutes. 
but I hope you have a great day. I hope you've learned something today, and if nothing else, you know the library is available here to help you.